If you cannot make a promise, people will not trust you. And if they don't trust you, they're never gonna buy from you. And so if your sales are struggling, if they're dipping, if you're not hitting your revenue targets, it's not an issue with sales, it's an issue with the promises that you're making. Are you making the type of promises you need to make in order to build trust and get that sale? Joe Polish says that marketing is storytelling, but sales is influence. And the reason why I love this quote is because I think storytelling is everywhere. I think storytelling is marketing and advertising and also sales. But the key word here is influence. Sales is about influence. And in order to be able to help influence someone's decision, influence where they're going and help them out, you need to be in a position of trust. You need to have credibility. It's a poor salesperson, a used car approach to try and convince people, to try and squeeze them into something, to try and hold them over a barrel or convince them that this is the way to go and do the bait and switch. That is a pretty outdated view of salespeople. And we see this when people are afraid to go into sales. They say, I'm not a salesperson because they're thinking of that used car salesperson convincing out of date, stupid tie wearing. Ugly shoe approach. <laughs> They're thinking of someone who's twisting their mustache and saying, ooh, here comes someone I can trick. We know, of course, that sales is just about helping people get what they want or what they need. It's not the negotiation, it's not any of those things. I want something, you have something. How do we make this work? That's sales. And so influence is key. Helping people is key. And so the reason why all of this is about the promise is because I believe more than anything else, the promises that you make, either overtly or verbally or subconsciously, are everything. That's everything. It's the entire thing. You need to be able to put yourself in a position where you can make a promise to someone. In marketing terms, some people call this the brand promise because when you think about the brand promise, you're probably thinking about a line of copy or some kind of mission statement or something like that. I'm talking more practically. I'm talking when you're sitting across from someone and you say, I will look into that for you. That's a promise, right? Do they believe that you will in fact look into that for them? I'll come back to you on Thursday. I'm gonna help you out with this. Let's sit down and figure out what you really need. You can go left or you can go right. My recommendation would be to go right for these reasons. If we did this and this and this, that would be the outcome. Those are all promises without you saying, I promise. I also think guarantees are bullshit. A guarantee is some kind of crutch to suggest that, well, listen, in our industry, we're all and garbage. And so let me step ahead of everyone else by guaranteeing something, right? This guarantee, there's no teeth to it. A guarantee is useless. But if you're working with people, if you can sit down with them and through your actions, through your tone, through your presentation, through your proposals or recommendations or outcome, if you're in a retail environment and you are wrapping something and sliding it across the table into a bag and saying, have a great day, there's a promise that has to be made there. And that promise is a commitment. It's a real thing and it's specific and it's detailed. If you're in a service-based business, I bet you the number one thing that holds you up is that you're afraid. You don't wanna tell someone that they'll have it in two weeks because you're worried you won't get it done in two weeks. You don't wanna tell someone they can have it for $5,000 because what if it costs more? You don't wanna promise them that you will do X, Y, and Z because they may screw up the process. You don't wanna make a promise because you don't wanna be held accountable for breaking your promise. You believe in under promise and over deliver. Here's what I believe in, over promise and then over deliver on top of that. Because your fear of making the commitment of making the promise makes you look wishy-washy. It makes you look like you don't know what the you're doing. It makes the customer hesitate down inside whether you're even capable of doing this. Because that little hesitancy, that little worry, that little contemplation of whether we can do it or not, they can see that, they can read that, they know that you are worried that you cannot do it. And so what you have to do is be willing to make strong commitments. I call them promises because if it's a promise, it can't be broken. You're on the phone with a client and you're saying, we'll have it to you Tuesday. The team is looking at you and saying, uh, I, don't, I don't, can we have it, can we? If you left it up to everyone else, they would have a meeting about a meeting about a meeting to figure out when they might be able to deliver what they might be thinking about. There is no time for that 
in business. You have to be willing to make promises and commitments, especially in the sales process. And then you have to build the team and the operations and the processes and everything you need to do to deliver on that promise. But your fear, your worry of being found out, of not delivering, of not living up to your promise means that you're promising nothing to no one. What you should be doing is promising everything to everyone and then managing the risk of maybe accidentally once in a while breaking a promise. It feels terrible to break a promise, doesn't it? You feel responsible. Guess what? If I promise you that I'm gonna do something and then I do it and then we do it and we do it and we do it and then the one time we don't do it and I built up goodwill, you better believe that when I approach you, I'm gonna feel terrible about this. And the client is gonna know that. You're gonna hear that in my voice. And I'm gonna say, I'm so sorry, this never happens. I'm really, really sorry. What can we do to make this right? Is there a way we can have extra time? Uh, I said I would do this and we're not able to. Can I give you my money back, your money back? Can I do something to make this right for you? But I would much rather face that once in a blue moon than live in a world where we're not making promises to anybody. And so if marketing is storytelling and sales is influence, what are you going to do to build that trust and build that influence? And so I wanna give you some practical advice if you're struggling with sales. Here's how you have to think about the time you spend with your clients. First, you need to be able to build a rapport or build a relationship with your client. Every new client conversation needs to start with the ability to just be people. Just have a conversation, just talk it out. And through those conversations, what you're gonna do is you're gonna demonstrate to the people that you know you're you have a skill, you have a talent, you have a perspective. There is something about you that is different from everyone else because it's your experience and it's your voice and it's your approach. And so through this relationship building, through these conversations, you're gonna demonstrate that. You know what you're talking about. And if you can demonstrate you know what you're talking about, that builds credibility, that builds trust. And then what you're gonna do is through this rapport and through this conversation and through them, through you demonstrating you know what you're talking about, you're gonna learn what they value. You're gonna understand their needs and you are gonna want to help them. You're gonna wanna help them get to where they need to go, overcome their challenges, avoid their pain. And so you can start to shape and tie what you do into what it is that they value. Now that sounds very textbook, that sounds very process driven, but at the end of the day, all I'm saying is talk to people, spend time with them, find out what they need, ask really smart questions, demonstrate you have answers. When you know what it is they need, you can make the commitment, you can make the promise, you can make the recommendation. But in simplest terms, here's what I'm saying. You're gonna meet people, you're gonna build a relationship with them. You're gonna ask them smart questions and talk. And through that, you're gonna demonstrate you know what you're talking about. And when you get to the place where you have a recommendation, a hard recommendation, you are gonna make a promise to them. And you're gonna do everything you can to deliver on that promise. Each conversation, the meeting is gonna end with a promise that you make to them. I will circle around with you in three days. I will send you a list of responsibilities you need to do. My team will work on a detailed schedule. We are going to ensure that we take care of everything. I hear what you're saying and what you're worried about, so here's what I'm gonna do for you. Each one of those is a promise. It's a commitment you're making. And when you can speak in direct terms like that, hey client, I'm really worried about timelines, so here's what we need to do. We need to talk next Tuesday. And on Tuesday, we're gonna figure everything out. At the end of Tuesday, I need you to make a decision. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this and this and this. I need you to do that and that and that. Now, it doesn't sound like I'm making a promise. It sounds like I'm just being bossy or making a declaration. But in fact, what I'm doing is I am promising that we will have our stuff together for that date and we will be ready to go. And coming out of that meeting, we will act and we will do what we need to do. It's very different than saying, uh, well, we could meet like Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Uh, We'll figure out what we're gonna do when we talk. And I don't know what the next steps are until we come out of it. Um, but, well, I'm trying not to make a promise now. But I'm sure we'll figure it out later. Like, even then I'm making a promise. Here's a classic. We'll get it to you next week. What does that mean? Is that Monday? Is that Friday? Is that a morning? Is that an evening? In what, you know, like, there's no specifics there. You're leaving yourself so much wiggle room. Or if a client asks you to scope out a project and you say, uh, I can't scope it out, 
But what you can do is you can hire me to figure out what you might need from a consulting point of view. There's no promise there because all you've said is you have the opportunity to hire me to figure out what you need. But what is the outcome? What are the benefits to me, even in a consultant point of view? There's a lot of ways that you can make a promise to someone. You can say, listen, I can't tell you the answer, but what, here's what I can tell you. We are about to go on a journey together. And it's the path of exploring. We're gonna ask smart questions and we are gonna seek out those answers. And through the very act of asking the right questions and through the very act of exploring the answers, we will arrive at a place where everything will become clear to you. I promise you that no matter how long it takes or how many hours I put into it, we will not stop working until we have arrived at an answer for your question. That's a promise. Now, are you willing to commit to this client unlimited timelines and unlimited hours? It's a promise. You have to build the operations to deliver it, but is it not more powerful to say, client, I will do whatever I need to do to ensure that you hit a place where you can achieve X, Y, or Z. Is that not a better promise than I will work with you to help you figure out what you need to do? I think that's a, not a great promise. And so if you are afraid to be specific with clients, this is killing you in sales. Because guess what I'm coming along and doing? I'm your competition. I am willing to make a promise. I am striving to deliver on those promises. We are building an entire company of people who make promises and people who deliver on great promises. How are you gonna compete with that? So what it comes down to is you need to put yourself in a position where you can build credibility, which can lead to trust, which allows you to have authority. I want you to think of one part of your business, one part of your process, one part of your client interactions where you can make a declarative promise to them, where you can say, I am going to do this for you. Trust me, client, that is going to happen. And I want you to measure the reaction. I, listen, you're going to be terrified. You're going to be afraid. If you don't do this all the time, you're going to be really, really worried. But guess what? That pressure, that anxiety, that worry is going to push you to raise yourself to a whole new level of delivery. So I want you to make one promise to one client and then see what the reaction is. Then I want you to tell me what it did for you. And lastly, I also want you, think big, to be bold to say yes. Maybe more energy. Ah. If you can't get people to trust you like that. <laughs> If you want more videos just like this one to help you with sales, marketing, mindset, growing your team, and taking your business to the next level, be sure to check out this video right over here. It is awesome. And be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click on the bell icon so you can get each video every day when it drops.